Is Roadhouse the greatest movie of all time? Oh my god, Roadhouse! Okay, maybe not, but I would definitely say that it's one of the best B-movies of all time, so when they announced that they were remaking it, I was wary. Roadhouse. So in this one, Jake Gyllenhaal plays Dalton, an ex-UFC legend who's reeling from a tragedy in the ring and takes a job as a bouncer in a troubled bar in the Florida Keys. While there, he gets caught up in a real estate scheme run by a crime lord's well-connected son, played by Billy Magnuson. <laughs> it's, it's very, very amusing. While I was super against the idea of remaking Roadhouse, I have to say, I was kind of sold when I saw the trailer for this movie, and the buzz surrounding director Doug Liman's remake has been pretty good. Maybe I was sold too much on it because I did precisely the wrong thing. I was so psyched when the trailer came out that, hey, I ended up drinking a bunch of beer and throwing on the original Roadhouse with friends, and I had a whale of a time. In fact, I've watched it a couple of times since then, even though before the trailer for this ever came out, I'd still seen the movie something like 30 or 40 times. I just went Roadhouse crazy this winter. You wanna fight, dickless? I sure ain't gonna show you my dick. And I guess you could say that the movie is very fresh in my mind. And as such, when I sat down to watch the remake, well, hey, what can I say? It just didn't compete. So let's get that out of the way first. The 2024 version of Roadhouse is just nowhere near as good as the original, and it never could be. Some critics may say that it is, but no, it's not. There was also a call to have this movie released in theaters. Having finally seen it for myself via streaming, I can say that that's really where it belongs, as it has budget CGI and some pretty unconvincing VFX, which, truth be told, will probably look fine at home. In a theater, not so much. So that's everything it isn't. But how is Roadhouse as a streaming B-movie? Pretty entertaining, even if it's not the absolute roller coaster ride that the trailer promised. It definitely has some great fight sequences, but it's curiously short of action until about halfway in. When it sticks to punch-ups, the movie's just great, but when it spreads out into a boat chases and explosions, well, the streaming nature of the film becomes more apparent. You start to wonder why they didn't study the original film closer, which proved car chases, explosions, and gut battles are ultimately unnecessary in a movie that's about people getting kicked in the head. You're too stupid to have a good time. But I'll give Roadhouse this. It has an ace lead performance by Jake Gyllenhaal, and a memorable villain in Conor McGregor, and one heck of a final battle royale between the two of them. I appreciate that Gyllenhaal never tries to channel the late great Patrick Swayze and does his own thing. In the original, Swayze's Dalton was half Zen master, half action hero. Here Dalton is more of a regular guy, being a down and out UFC fighter who's been disgraced and makes a living hustling underground fights. In this world, he's so famous, because everybody saw his most infamous match online, that many of his opponents are rightly scared of him, including Post Malone in a cameo. Jill Hall plays Dalton as low-key and friendly, with one character comparing him to Mr. Rogers. He makes fast friends with people living in Glass Key, which is a nice little Dashiell Hammett reference, the town he goes to bounce in. Some of these relationships, of course, sound like they should be pretty cheesy, but they come off as less so, thanks to Jill Hall's charm. Physically, he definitely looks like a legit UFC fighter, sporting an impossibly lean and chiseled physique. He aces the hand-to-hand -hand scraps, and for 90% of the film, Dalton is pretty invincible. But then McGregor comes in, chewing scenery like there's no tomorrow, as a surprisingly likable but insane enforcer. Dalton! I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. Unlike other action heroes, Jill in the Hall has no problem getting his ass beat, and even if the film is ultimately a B or B minus action flick, he's still A plus as an action star. Otherwise, the film skews relatively closely to the original Roadhouse, although in a very PC move, there's way less flesh on display here in this movie, which is kind of a bummer because, I mean, the original Roadhouse had something for everybody. It had something for the guys, it had something for the girls. Here you see Conor McGregor's ass, and that's about it. His love interest in this, of course, just like in the original, is a surgeon played by the Suicide Squad's Daniela Melchior. The main difference is that the Sam Elliott character has been done away with, which is just as well as, I mean, who could compare to Sam Elliott and that amazing head of hair? Billy Magnuson is a relatively flat, one-dimensional bad guy, but he's a little more than a MacGuffin, with him serving one main purpose only, bringing in Conor McGregor's Knox. 
Even if McGregor's acting isn't very good, he makes up for it in presence and physicality. I'm not going to say that he's a future action star in the works, but he is fun in this movie. Cannot be denied. The fight between him and Gyllenhaal is legitimately a great action scene and is punctuated by a very cool needle drop. So while the Roadhouse remake was more of a mixed bag than I thought it would be, I still had a pretty good time with it. People will inhale this thing when it hits streaming, and I'm glad, as B-level action movies would be a nice niche for a service like Prime Video, and I hope they make more of them. And again, Gyllenhaal could be an amazing future action hero if that's the road he goes down. Too often, non-superhero straightforward action flicks are frowned upon. The genre needs new blood, and well, he could be it. I give this one a relatively generous 7 out of 10. I was going to give it a 6, but that last fight scene kind of did it for me, so it gets up to a 7. 